afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Alyssa Quorum, and I'm joined by Justin Nielsen on this Friday, March 20th. And on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the CBOE Volatility Index, as well as GSX and Amazon. But we begin with a look at the major indexes. So this is a chart of the NASDAQ. You can see uh, pretty substantial losses again this week, closing today down about 3.9%, Justin, and intraday getting very dangerously close to undercutting the low of yesterday, uh, which was day one of a rally attempt. So what do you make of the action that we saw today? Yeah, so it looks like uh, the NASDAQ did close down um, over 4%, um, uh, the NASDAQ uh, 100, I'm sorry, and the NASDAQ composite down 3.8%. Um, for the week, it was down 12%. Now, what we've been looking at is Wednesday's low is kind of our line in the sand. As long as we can stay above that low, uh, that's where we're looking to keep this rally alive, this rally attempt alive. Now, what we're looking for, and we've said this over and over, is a follow-through day. And what a follow-through day is, is it Think of it as, you know, back in your geometry days, you know, you have the one point and that's your low. Um, in order to say that you have an uptrend, you need another point to make that line. And so the follow through day is that second point. And we look for that to be four days or more after we have day one of a rally. And that day one of a rally attempt came yesterday. So this is still day two because we did not undercut the low. Again, the NASDAQ got close. Uh, the S&P 500 got even closer. But as long as we can stay within that, above that low, we still have the rally attempt alive. Now, just because, you know, let's say we get a follow through day next week. That does not mean that you want to go all in. That, that does not mean you want to go in heavy. You still have to be very light um, especially while we're under the 21 day moving average line um, so, so far. So a couple things you wanna look for. First, the follow through day. Next, getting above that 20 day moving average line. Um, and then even then, we might still need some time to be you know, put in here so that some of these bases can start correcting themselves. Sure. Well, the rally attempt is still alive, but volatility is still rampant. So now let's take a look at the monthly chart of the CBOE volatility index here, spiking this week to levels not seen since towards the end of 2008. What does this signal to you, Justin? Yeah, so a lot of people look at this, um, and, and it's, it's known as the fear index or the VIX. And what this does is it looks at the implied volatility of the S&P 500 and the way they calculate that is by using options. Um, you know, the options, one of the characteristics of options is it does have an, an implied volatility component as people start, you know, projecting out what they think the volatility is going to be in the next 30 days. So based on that, we saw a spike in the VIX that we have not seen since the 2008 financial crisis. Um, so one of the things that we're looking for is for that to go down uh, considerably. And when it does, that usually signals that you might be reaching near a bottom. Now, it was down, uh, you know, quite a bit today earlier. Um, but as, as you see, it kind of did spike back up again. Um, so for the month, it's still up very high. So you want to see that kind of volatility start coming down, that fear start coming down. But even then, it should be noted that you will sometimes see uh, the the bottom might not happen for another couple months. So just because you see that spike um, start reversing and getting lower doesn't mean that the bottom is actually here. Sometimes it does take a little bit longer. Yeah, that's right. A very important disclosure to be making. And now let's flip on over to a couple of stocks that we are continuing to keep an eye on. The first of which is GSX in the China education space. Now that relative strength line, the blue line on the chart just continues to roar higher, fi shares finding support at that 50 day line this week. So this one is definitely at the top of the watch list, I think. Yeah, there's so few stocks that have really held above their 50 day moving average line. So the fact that this has been able to do that and actually get support there and come, you know, bounce back up from that line is really incredible. And you see the fact that the relative strength line is soaring so much, you know, just kind of reflects the fact that this is only off 14% when the indexes are down almost 30%. So uh, the relative strength line does compare the stock performance versus the S&P 500. And so this is definitely outperforming the S&P 500 by a wide margin. And what I think looks very interesting here is if you kind of look at this chart, 
um, you can kind of see if you draw a line at the highs coming down, there's a little bit of a downtrend here. And I was, I was kind of hoping today that we were breaking above that downtrend. It was looking very solid early in the morning as we got above 42. But the fact that we did reverse, um, as, as did the market considerably, uh, that just kind of means that this might need a little bit more time. Right. Well, you can be sure that we're watching this name very closely, along with Amazon, of course, one of the major beneficiaries that we're seeing with all of the workers and general population really working from home this week and ordering a lot more food supplies. We did see, however, the stock uh, hit a little bit of resistance this week at that 50-day line, closing down today about 2% lower. But nonetheless, that relative strength line is still continuing skyward. So what do you make of the chart action here, Justin? Yeah, and one of the things that I like about Amazon is it just really hasn't been nearly as volatile as the market. Um, so it was down 1.85% today when the market was down almost 4%. So that, again, is why the relative strength line is going up. You do have to remember that you know it, it is going down, sure, but it's going down less than the S&P 500, and that's why that relative strength line is going up. So as you mentioned, there's a lot of things that kind of uh, support you know, this, this doing well through all the coronavirus fears, um, but you still, it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily one of those things where you wanna be getting very exposed to stocks because the best place to be right now is cash. However, this should be on the top of your watch list. As you mentioned, this is one of the things where we did get back above the 200 day moving average line. That's the black line that you see on this chart. Um, and we got resistance at the 50 day moving average line. There's a lot of stocks that are coming up to their 50 day moving average lines right now. And that is gonna be a key test. So Amazon this time around, got turned away from that line. Uh, sometimes that's where people like to short things uh, when things are like coming up to that line and then getting turned away. Um, I don't think that shorting is a good idea right now, especially for Amazon, but the fact that it got turned away from that line just might mean it needs a little bit more time. If you do see it get back above that red line, that 50 day moving average line, it's gonna look a little bit more interesting, but we do need that market to be recovering and getting that follow through day before we touch any stocks. Right. Well, one thing's for sure, there are still stocks that are outperforming the market on a relative Absolutely. basis, making them great names for your watch list, which we, of course, will continually update and another great place for in-depth analysis of stocks to watch in current market conditions is IBD Live. So everyone should make sure they are tuning in every morning for that daily live stream. Isn't that right, Justin? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is where we can really help walk you through our thought process. Um, and we've been doing a lot of historical uh, kind of precedent. You know, it's really important. It really kind of helps you get up your learning curve um, when you can kind of see how these things have played out in the past, how these big winners have looked as they kind of came out of this uh, type of correction um, or bear market. Uh, so it's it's really important that you kind of have that history behind you. It just gives you a lot more experience to draw from. And uh, that's what we're sharing every day on IBD Live. Right. The more that we prepare now, um, the better prepared we will be when we see these new real-time examples once that eventual follow-through day comes. And it's hard to, you know, it's hard to feel optimistic right now. I mean, there's so much pessimism out there. There's so much bad news. But the fact is, you know, we've we've dealt with things, you know, maybe not like this, but we've dealt with things that have been, you know, bad in the past. Um, we always come out of it. The market is forward-looking. So. Don't wait until you see the economic data start improving, um, because if you wait that long, you'll probably be too late. So uh, that's why it's really important to be checking in with us, because we're going to keep you up to breast of what the market is doing, because that is a leading indicator to the economy. All right. Well, on that note, that's it uh, for us for today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you right back here next week. Thanks for watching.